I'll do Rick T Outdoor Adventure and Billy just knock your camera. Come here, lad. Let's say hello. Hello, he's a good boy, eh? He's a good boy, eh? He's a good boy. Yeah. Yeah, we're out in the forest again today. And uh, just a quick vid, really, today. I've been tagged by uh, Jimmy from uh, Jimmy Lundy's Wild Camping and Bushcraft. Top lad. And he does a lot of stuff and uh, he's always out and about. He's doing really well on YouTube at the minute. So check him out if you fancy it. And, uh, I'll put a link to his channel in the description. But yeah, top geezer. And uh, Jimmy's tagged me in uh, my five tips to wild camping, specifically for beginners. Now, I mean, I could rattle on all day about wild camping and tips. We could do everything from planning and execution to sleep systems to moving in the mountains, etc. Matt, we did a lot. We could go on all day. But I'm going to try and choose my five tips. Yeah. So specifically, the ones that I think are quite important, but I mean, there'll be a few people doing this tag, so I'm gonna try and choose the ones that are more, I think, more honed into specific things. Yep, and what I feel make a big difference to wild camping. So stick with us and we'll go through our five tips to wild camping. So tip number one, which applies to a lot of outdoor activities, wear layers, yep, layer your clothing. So tip number one, layer your clothing and make use of them layers. It's no good layering and then setting off with everything on and getting a sweat on when you're climbing up that hill with that 60 litre rucksack with all your kit in, your food and your water and your tent and everything else. And then you're going to stay cold for the day. You might warm up, I mean, you'll be red hot at the time and you're going to be sweating, but that sweat will make you damp and it'll make you cold at night and sweaty and uncomfortable. So the trick is, layer up, a base layer, a mid layer, a windproof layer or an insulated layer and a waterproof layer on the top, yep. And make sure you use them layers. You take them off when you're getting warm, you put them on when you're cold, yep. It's too easy to just be cracking on and think, oh, I can't be asked to take it off. And the next thing, you're wet through with sweat underneath. And even though, even if you're wearing wicking layers, it's still not the nicest. So tip number one, layers. Tip number two, have a different set of kit for sleeping in. Yep, don't sleep in your outdoor clothes. Unless, of course, you're in an outdoor shelter and you don't have a sleeping bag, etc. But if you're camping with a sleeping bag and a cover, don't sleep in your damp outdoor kit. Yep, take it all off, put it in a bag, use it as a pillar, something like that. But don't sleep in your outdoor kit. You'll have a damp night. If possible, carry an extra pair of long johns and top, like a thermal long johns and top, that pack down to nothing, that are really small and light. Take all your clothes off, put them on, and then get in your sleeping bag. That's tip number two. Tip number three, have a spare pair of socks and a hat to sleep in, yep, or some sort of head cover. Whatever time of year it is, if it's too warm for a woolly hat, it's nice to have like a buff or something like that you can just put over your head at night when you're sleeping. Especially in an open shelter, 
or even saw in a tent. Yep, always have a spur hat as well. And then when you're sleeping, pop, pop that hat on, you lose a lot of heat from your head. Tip number three. Clothes in the dry bag. Dry clothes on. Extra warm socks in winter. Hat. I know. And we're sorted. That's what it's all about. In the morning, put me other gear on. Yep. Get me, get me, get me clothes on. Get me sleeping gear off. Wrapped up in a dry bag, ready for the next night on the trail. That's the way to do it. Works every time. Whoa. Get out of it. Go on, lad. Go on, lad. But if you can, take yourself a hot water bottle. Yeah, preferably of the furry kind. What do you reckon, Billy? Yeah. See you in a few hours. Tip number four. Learn how to make your water safe to drink. Buy something to filtrate your water, yep, or learn how to do it the old school ways. There's nothing worse than having to carry four or five litres, and if you're out for three, four days, you're going to have to replenish that water. Yep, it opens up a wild, wildly bigger spectrum of land you can explore. You can go further, you can go longer. Learn to make water safe, or buy yourself a filter system. There's thousands of them on the market. There's some fantastic cheap ones. Soya mini filters are brilliant. Well, yeah, tip number four. Something to filter water and learn how to do it. Talk about making water safe. There's a cup of safe water for you. A good rolling boil. As long as it's been filtered first. Lost. Tip number five. Learn how to use a map and compass. Yep. It'll open up a lot more for you. More adventure. Yep. More independence. More two, three days. More distance away from your car. Distance away from civilization. At the end of the day, more satisfaction for yourself. As a wild camper, learn to use a map and a compass, 100%. Bang on! One last final tip as a bonus, just get out there and do it. Don't wait for anybody, yep. Just plan it and do it, yep. Throw your pack in your car, throw your pack on your bike, throw your jump on your bike, whatever, just set off and do it. Whether it's a Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night, whatever. Camp out, get up early, have a Washington River and go to work. Let's do it. Catch you in a bit. Rick T, Outdoor Adventure and Billy. And give us another subscriber. Give us a subscribe. Cheers. Catch you in a bit.